Hey everyone, DJ from Eternal Visuals here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this super cool look from the Cowboy Bebop opening credits. Now, I'm not going to show you how to hand draw or animate anything, but I will be showing you some cool effects that, if understood, you could replicate the entire opener if you wanted. Let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. There are three fonts I pulled from Defont.com to help with this look. Outlaw Stars for our credits. DCC Ash for our sliding text, and Hardcore Attitude for our Cowboy Bebop font. For our characters, hands, lighter, and flame, I grabbed free vectors from publicdomainvectors.org and did some adjusting in Adobe Illustrator to get the elements that we need. For each element, I chose a two-tone look light blue for the highlights and black for the shadows. Then duplicated each of these layers and meshed them together to get a solid silhouette layer. You can do this with anything that you'd like, but I put a link in the description with my Illustrator file if you want to follow along. Once everything is downloaded and fonts are installed, we can open up After Effects. Create a new project. Save it as Cowboy Bebop Tutorial. Create a new comp. Title it Cowboy Bebop Motion. We are going to stick with 1920 by 1080 for our resolution, 2997 for our frame rate, and our classic 10 second timeline. To start, let's begin with our sliding text background. Select your shape tool and cover the entire comp. Open the color window and use this hex code to get that muted spy blue. Grab your type tool and click and drag to create a text box. For our sample text, I found a site with Cowboy Bebop script lines. Link is in the description. Just copy and paste whatever sentences you'd like. Head over to your character properties and select the Hardcore Attitude font. We want our sentences to vary in size and tracking, which means the space between the lettering. The smallest font I went with was 50, and 200 was the largest I went for, for the Cowboy Bebop title using the DCC Ash font. For the tracking, I used either 0 or 200. Create five different text layers with different scripting, size, and tracking. Make sure you can see all of these texts inside the comp. In your Effects tab, search for Turbulent Displacement. Drag this effect onto all your layers except your Cowboy Bebop layer. Set the amount to 20. In order for these distortions not to move when we change their positions, we have to pre-comp each layer. Feel free to title them as they are. Once they are all pre-comped, slightly offset their position from one another to the left or right and slightly overlapping at times. Once they are in the right start positions, select all of your layers and hit P on your keyboard to open the position settings. Make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the timeline and create a start keyframe for all layers. Move your playhead to 7 seconds. Now take each layer and move their positions to the left or right while holding shift on your keyboard so they stay straight. Select all of your layers, right click, and pre-comp. Title this text background. With your pre-comp selected, take your shape tool and drag a mask over the bottom half of your comp leaving some padding on the sides. And that's it, we have our frame. Let's move on to our credits. Grab your type tool and create a new text box. Type your desired text. I'm creating one called Motion Design By. Choose Outlaw Stars as the font type and 60 as the font size. Duplicate the text layer by Controller Command C and paste for Controller Command V on your keyboard. Change the text and change the size to 90. Move these to be stacked slightly above our background mask on the left side. For our top text, we'll be doing a simple transparency fade in and out. Move your playhead to the beginning of the timeline and hit T on your keyboard to open up the opacity settings. Make a keyframe at 0%. Move the playhead 5 frames and bring the opacity to 100. For our bottom text, hit the down arrow on the layer and hit the animate icon and select opacity. Hit the animate drop down arrow, then the range selector arrow, then advanced arrow. Change the opacity to 0 turn randomize on and adjust the random seed to two. At the beginning of the timeline, create a start frame at zero. Then move one second and adjust the start to 100. This should make each letter appear individually. Now move your playhead to six seconds and 20 frames. Create new opacity keyframes for each text layer at 100. Move to seven seconds and drop their opacities to zero. And our credits are finished. Now for our character animation. Go to File, Import Files, and select our Illustrator file. Click the Import As tab and select Composition Retain Layer Sizes. Hit the drop down arrow on the comp folder and select the Man and Man Silhouette layers and drag them under your credits. Before making any adjustments, select the Man layer and parent it to the Man Silhouette. Select the Man Silhouette and decrease the scale to 77 and drag it into position. 
Grab the anchor tool and bring it to the bottom left. This will help where our character rotates. Now grab your hand and hand silhouette layers and drag them above your man layers. Repeat the same steps. Parent the hand to the hand silhouette and decrease the scale of the hand to 67%. Move the anchor point to the bottom of the wrist and move the position to line up with his mouth. Grab your light and light silhouette layers and repeat parenting. Move the anchor to the end of the arm and scale it down to 70. Move the arm into position where the lighter would reach the cigarette. Drag your flame layer on top of all other layers. Move its position to the top of the lighter and parent it to the light silhouette. Move the anchor to the bottom of the flame and scale to 77%. Now that everything is in place, move the playhead to one second and create position and rotation keyframes for your man, hand, and light layers. Move your playhead to the beginning and rotate your hand out, your lighter down, and your man to the left. Head back to one second on the timeline and create opacity keyframes for your flame, man silhouette, lighter silhouette, and your hand silhouette. Adjust the flame opacity to zero. Move the playhead to 10 frames and move the silhouette layers to zero and the flame layer to 100. Now it should appear as if the flame appearing is lighting up the other elements. Head to two seconds, 20 frames and create duplicate keyframes of all of these layers. Move to the three second mark and bring the silhouette opacities back to 100 and your flame layer to zero. At the three second mark, create rotation and position keyframes of all of your silhouette layers as well. Then move to four seconds on the timeline and copy the position and rotation keyframes from the beginning of the timeline to go back to their starting positions. And our character animation is done. Let's give this flame some personality. Select your flame layer and open the scale settings by hitting S on your keyboard. I'll click the timer and open the expressions window. Type wiggle, open parentheses, 20, comma, 10, close parentheses, then click on the layer to close the expressions window. The result is you get a constant organic looking flame once it appears. Last but not least, our smoke trail. With all your layers deselected, grab your pen tool and create a vertical white solid with a five pixel black stroke. Go to your effects tab and look for wave warp. Drag this onto your shape. Adjust the wave height to 76, wave width to 119, the direction to zero, and speed to 0 0.5. Move the shape down to the bottom of the comp and change the pinning setting to bottom edge. You should now have a nice smooth smoke wave that expands as it goes higher. Go back to your effects tab and look for rough and edges. Drag it onto your shape layer and adjust to these settings. Edge type to rough and color, color to black, border to 18.5, edge sharpness to 1.18, scale to 60, complexity to 10, and evolution to 230. Right click your layer and pre-comp, title it smoke trail. Move the bottom of the smoke trail position to align with the end of the cigarette. Head back to your effects tab and search for posturized time. This is what will give it that illustrated motion we want. Drag it onto your layer and set the frame rate to 8. Final touch, grab your shape tool and create a mask around your smoke. Open the mask settings and crank the mask feathering to 115. Move your playhead to 4 seconds and move your masks to the bottom of the comp and create a mask keyframe. Move 15 frames and move the mask up to see the smoke trail and let it fade off before reaching the top of the blue frame. And we're finished. We covered a lot of effects today, but I hope that you can see this entire opener could be accomplished through some simple position moves, mask framing, and two tone elements. I hope you learned something today and hope to see you in the next one.